Welcome to Keep the Game Beautiful podcast. Each week, I highlight incredible people who are doing amazing things in soccer, the beautiful game. I'm Anna Turi, your host. Thank you for listening. Today, Tristan gives some great advice about starting out as a younger coach. I have gone to many different coaching classes, and I have always been the youngest one there. I find it a little hard to speak up and share my knowledge sometimes. I loved hearing about Tristan's journey starting out as a younger coach. I think this is an, is an excellent episode for anyone wanting to start coaching. So enjoy the episode. Today's guest is Tristan Studeville. She spent two years playing collegiately at St. Louis University, and after that she went to Ball State University for four years. Tristan is the co-founder, owner, and director of, the, of coaching at PS90. She's a part of the United Soccer Coaches 30 Under 30 program, and I'm very thankful to have her in my corner. So Tristan, would you like to take take a second and fill in any gaps that I missed in your story or background? Um, I think you did a great job. I, I think that pretty much covers it all. Um, I We just started PS90 Soccer, which is a residential soccer camp, and we've just partnered with Soccer Girl Probs as well, so we'll have the first fully female staff and camper residential camp as well. So, but I think you filled in everything else. So, thank you very much for having me. I'm excited to be here today. So, on my podcast, Keep the Game Beautiful, I always start with the same three questions. So, first, what does the beautiful game mean to you? The beautiful game for me, it's given me so many opportunities and it's it's no longer just something I do, you know, whenever it's my lifestyle. It's something that I try to live out through um, absolutely everything. And um, I think it's a way to have a platform to do great things, um, not only on the field, but off the field and a way to give back to the community. And I just think there's so many things that you can do through soccer and um, it's just a, a great outlet and resource and avenue for anybody and everybody that wants to be involved with it. What are actions or things you do to keep the game beautiful? That's a great question. Um, I think for me, I try to find ways to, to give back to the soccer community as much as I can, just because the soccer community has given so much to me growing up. And I know the doors that can be opened through soccer and the opportunities that can be given through soccer. And so um, what I try to do is open those doors for as many people as I can and help as many people as I can. And um, one of the things that I started at a really young age was KC Goalkeeping, and it was a nonprofit organization um, that I started to give free training to goalkeepers and families in the soccer community that might not be able to afford it. Um, I was in a time where um, I was just about old enough to see that, you know, my parents are paying for coaching fees and league fees and club fees and tournament fees and everything else. But being a goalkeeper on top of that, I saw them having to pay for goalkeeper fees as well, which were anywhere from 75 to a hundred dollars an hour at the time. And I was like, there's no way that everybody can afford this. So I started Casey goalkeeping to try and make sure that there wasn't anybody that was missing out on the opportunity to play the position or be involved in soccer just because of money. So. How do you encourage others to keep the game beautiful? Um, I guess I started to do that through KC goalkeeping. One of the things that was really important for me was that the goalkeepers that I was working with um, were able to turn around and take the knowledge that they learned from us and give it give back to kids that were younger than them. So they could turn around and continue Casey goalkeeping and continue to offer free training um, and make sure that there was never an end to it and that kids were always offered that opportunity. Um, one of the other things we're doing through PS90 soccer and through Soccer Girl Probs camps right now is called our chosen program. And so we choose five athletes every summer Um, And we're looking for kids that are not only, um, you know, doing their best on the field, but we're looking for people who are finding ways to give back to the 
to their community, to the soccer community, to the people around them. And we're really trying to push the importance of giving back and finding a way to lift those around you up. And so that's something that we're really proud of and a program that we're really excited to continue to push. So let's just start from where it began. When did you start playing soccer and why? So I started playing, I was about four, and it's kind of a funny story. I actually wanted to play football, but my dad was a football coach, and so that's all I wanted to do, and my mom said, nope. And so my grandpa coached soccer in Kansas City for about 25 years before I was born, and so he was like, why don't you just try soccer and see if you like it, and I fell in love with it. And I've been playing ever since. I, I grew up playing for Vlako Indonovsky, um here in Kansas City. And then um, I played for Jim Whipke out in St. Louis. So um, I had a great youth career and absolutely loved it and um, finished out my college career at Ball State and had a great experience there and, um, you know, got into coaching at a really young age and was able to, um, you know, get involved with the licensure and, and all of that and, you know, I'm just trying to continue to learn as much as I can. I think Tony DeChico was a huge part of my youth career. Um, I went and trained with him every summer, and he's been a huge, huge mentor and role model. And he he always told me, you know, there's there's never a point where you should feel like you're done learning. And if you ever reach that point, then you need to turn around and start over again because you've missed something. So for me, um, you know, as a coach and a player, it's always been important to you know, take everything as a learning opportunity and a learning process. And so that's what I've been trying to do since I started. When did you start playing the goalkeeper position? I think I started playing as soon as we could start playing in goal. So I think at that time it was like seven or eight. Um, And I knew that's what I wanted to do because (laughs) when I wanted to play football, I thought, that in goal I could kind of you know tackle some people turns out you can't tackle people in goal but that was like my mindset and kind of I just wanted to I wanted it to be a physical and competitive I wanted to be involved in a physical and competitive sport and um, I think the goalkeeper position is unique because you're kind of you know a little bit by yourself back there and um, you know you get to to kind of run things from the back and I, I really really fell in love with it as soon as I started. So what about coaching? Who inspired you to start coaching in the first place? So it was actually Vlaco and um, I started Casey goalkeeping and Vlaco was the one that really kind of took me under his wing and said, you know, this is an avenue that you can actually take somewhere and, you know, run with and, Um, He made sure that I was able to work with the goalkeepers within the club and that I had players to work with. And um, he fully supported what I was doing. He allowed me to come in and help with camps. Um, But then on the flip side, I had Tony every summer and and Tony really opened the door on the licensing side of things. And, um, you know, he made sure that I knew what doors were open for me and that I was able to take advantage of those opportunities. And, um, when I took my advanced national, um, you know, Tony made sure he was there and, and that I knew of that opportunity and was able to be there. And he really helped kind of guide me in that direction. And um, he had a huge impression on me as a coach. And, um, you know, I had huge role models, you know, through Lisa Cole and Leslie Gallimore and Tracy Noonan. Tracy was huge for me as well. I went to her camps every summer and she, She's been a huge mentor and still is to this day um, for me as a coach. And so I think I was, I was blessed to have a lot of great people um, in front of me and as a part of my youth career that really helped me know that this, this was something that I could do. And this was something that, um, you know, I could excel at if I put the work into it. So. Why did having Vlatko's support while starting Casey goalkeeping really help you? Um, It was great because at the time, Vlatko was my club coach, but, um, you know, being little and still to this day, like, Vlatko is, he's an amazing coach. And I, you know, thought, I still do think the world of him. 
um, as a person and as a coach. And I think he took a chance on me as a player when I was starting to play. And um, just to have that reassurance from somebody like him um, saying that I could do it and, you know, that I had somebody to learn from as a coach like him, um, you know, that really uh, – Blocko's word to me means – quite a bit and for him to tell me that I could do it really meant a lot and really just kind of set into stone for me that this is what I wanted to do so how has coaching helped you play collegiately oh that's a great question so for me I think that as a coach and a player there's things to learn from both so when I started coaching I started to recognize that with a lot of my goalkeepers you know, we were going back to the basics. So we were breaking everything down to a really fundamental technical level. And it, for me as a player, I could take that information in those sessions and I could really reflect on, okay, this is how these little tiny details make the biggest difference. So let's see how I can apply that to my game. Um, You know, coaching had me reading the game differently from a different perspective that I don't think I got as a player. So taking those perspectives and the things I was seeing and being able to transfer them into playing and, you know, being in that position, I think both work really well together. Um, I think on the flip side of that, being a player, um, you know, I could understand the situations that my goalkeepers were in. I could relate to what they were seeing or situations that they were in because I was in them myself. So I was able to take, things that I was seeing while I was playing or situations that I might need to improve on and find ways to adapt and develop to the goalkeepers that I was working with. So I think both play really, really well together. And it gave me a unique perspective to take into both worlds. Do you think it's important for younger players to try and coach at least a team once? Yeah, I think if if you're interested, even in the slightest, I think there are so many club teams out there and programs that you can get involved in, um, even just to see if it's something that you're comfortable with doing. I think for me, just, you know, getting into it was great because then I got a sense of, you know, what coaching actually was. And I got to, like I said, see the game in a different perspective. So I would highly suggest if anybody out there is even in the slightest bit interested in coaching just take a chance find a youth team and just volunteer with them for a while just come out to practices there's so many coaches that'll let you come shadow and just you know watch a practice and just observe the coaches and the great thing about coaching is everybody has a slightly different coaching philosophy and technique and way they go about it so you know don't feel like you have to be stuck with with just observing one team go out and watch a few games watch some practices watch you know, teams play on TV and watch professional coaches and how they coach. There's so many different coaching styles out there. And so, you know, even if it it doesn't feel like the right fit at first, but you really want to get into it, just take the time to like find out how you want to coach and who you are as a coach and what's important to you. Um, And I think the younger you can start, you know, diving into that, the better. So going through some coaches, coaching classes, how were you able to stay confident and, and assert yourself when you were younger and with some men too? That's, that's also a great question. I think I was fortunate to start coaching at a really young age. So I had the time to kind of figure out what I wanted to be as a coach and who I wanted to be. Um, and, you know, kind of what I wanted to be remembered as, as a coach. I also had some really great, mentors in front of me that I could learn from like Blocko and Tracy and Tony and, and all of them that I've mentioned. Um, so for me, I was younger. So that was difficult because everybody kind of looks at you like, Oh, you're a coach. Like surely you don't, you know, I was 17 and I had my advanced national. So it's like, you have what, how did you do that? But you have to, for me, it was like, well, I can prove myself on the field in my coaching like if you see what i'm able to do the lessons i'm able to plan how i read the game and and see it um i kind of let my skill speak for itself i had to have a belief in myself that i was confident in what i could put out there and what i could put on the table 
and that helped me a lot. And, and having those people around me, um, that really strong support system um, was great too, because, you know, I can bounce ideas off of them and, um, you know, just having those people tell you that, hey, like this is the right place for you and, you know, you can do something with this. Um, you know, you just kind of have to keep those in your back pocket to fall back on sometimes um, if you do doubt yourself. I mean, like you said, being being a female in this industry, you are the minority. And so you do have, you know, you have to hold hold your own a bit. And we need more female coaches. Let me put that out there. And that's something that Soccer Girl Probs Camps is really, really trying to, to work on and help reinforce. We're trying to work with United Soccer Coaches on that. But, you know, being a female in this industry, it is difficult, but believe in yourself, believe in what you can do and the impact that you can have in the game and just just stay true to who you are as a coach and a person um, and let, let your stuff speak for itself. So you talked about working with United Soccer Coaches to try and get more women. What are you doing? So right now we're trying to take our, like I said, our Soccer Girl Props Camps are fully female um, in terms of campers and staff. And so what we're trying to do is to be able to offer um, some coaching courses to our older campers um, if they're interested, um, whether that be, you know, their goalkeeping licenses or maybe their level one and two and um, just get them started on the licensing path. The other thing that we're trying to do is we just want to get these girls in front of strong female role models within the industry. We're working with Landon Donovan's USL program, which is fully female staffed, not only um, with their, you know, coaching staff on the field, but their strength and conditioning staff, their marketing department, you know, it's all female run. And so with them, you know, we're getting them out to the fields and out to sessions and out to camps. Um, you know, we want these girls to see that they can succeed in this industry and there's a place for them here. And that if that's what they want to do, that we are there for them. 100% of the way, and we just want to give them strong female role models and mentors um, through this process and through this camp that, you know, they can rely on and they can fall back on to help, you know, help them succeed in whatever they want to do on and off the field. So can you talk about what it's like to be selected into the 30 under 30 program? Absolutely. 30 under 30 program is, it's been a great program so far. Um, you know, the application process was rigorous, which was expected. Um, and, you know, they get a lot of great applicants every year. So I was honored to be selected. And I got paired up with a great mentor in Celia Slater. She runs True North Sports, which is actually, it's a camp for coaches. So she brings in coaches from around the country, all different sports, and it's like a coach's retreat. So she runs a really great program, and she's been a great mentor for me and running my camps and just somebody that I could rely on um, for both on the field and, and off the field advice. So that's been great. And I think the pool of members in this year's 30 under 30 class um, is great. It was great to meet everybody at the convention. Everybody's from a little bit different of a background and, you know, they're at different places in their careers. So it's a great group of people to be able to bounce ideas off of and learn from, um, and share things with. So that's been great. And, you know, we've all been able to communicate pretty consistently throughout the year so far. And I think United Soccer Coaches does a great job to facilitate a program like this. I think this is something that's really important um, for up and coming coaches. So um, I'm honored to be a part of it. What advice would you give to someone that wants to apply for 30 under 30? My advice would be go for it. Absolutely go for it. Um, don't be intimidated by the application. Take the time to sit down and go through it and tell your story. You know, it's, everybody has a story and it's unique to them. So really focus on what your story is and what you want to do with your coaching career and find your why and share it. You know, why are you coaching? Why are you coaching the way that you are coaching and, you know, why do you want to make an impact? And so I would say, share your story, find your why, and just keep it authentic. So what's your why? What's my why? My why is the fact that 
you know, soccer has given me so much in my life. It's, it's opened so many doors for me. It's given me so many opportunities to see so many things and meet so many great people on and off the field. And it's made a huge impact in who I am as a person, a player, a coach, absolutely every aspect of my life. Soccer has played a part in it. So for me, I want to find as many ways as possible to give back to the game and help grow the game. I think seeing the impact it's had on me, I just want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to experience that same impact. And I don't think that it should be a question of can you afford it or not. I think that we need to find ways to grow the game in a cost-effective manner that everybody can be a part of. And I think that's something that's really missing right now. And so for me, my current why is because I want to close that gap and I want to grow the game and I want everybody to have the opportunities that I have had in my life to this point and just, you know, see where it can go. What really inspired you to start sessions that are easier for everyone to access? That's a great question. I, I think it goes along with why I started AC goalkeeping and um, you know for me again I don't think anybody should miss out on something um, or a session or, or training just because of money I think you know too too often kids um, you know don't, don't get the chance to do what they really want to do or what they're passionate about and if that's goalkeeping if that's soccer I want to give those kids the opportunity that they otherwise you know, might not be able to experience. I think there's so much to be, um, you know, there's so much to learn and there's so much growing that can happen in soccer. Um, so if I can provide, you know, just an ounce or, you know, just a sliver of, you know, guidance for those kids that, that don't get training on a regular basis, um, or even if they do, you know, I just want to be able to play my part and, and give back however I can and wherever I can. So, how have you seen kids, how, have your, how has your impact on kids changed when you offered cheaper sessions or even free sessions? Um, I don't know that my, my coaching philosophy or my style of coaching necessarily changed. Um, it's really important for me whether, you know, we have kids paying for sessions or they're coming in for free that my training does not, it does not change. Um, it's consistent through and through, again, because I don't think that anyone should have a different experience just because of money. Um, I think what changed the most is just my, I guess, the engagement from the community and, um, you know, just getting more people involved and people recognizing what was happening in the soccer community um, financially and kind of where they could step in as well and help out. So it was great to see the growth within the community it, with this kind of issue and, and, you know, how we could all come together um, and help spread this, you know, not just in Kansas city, but across the country. So I think it's brought a lot of great people together together and um, been a great way to continue to grow the game with good people. So how did the idea of PS 90 come up? So, I grew up through the residential camp system um, and is actually how I got connected with Tony initially. Um, but I, after I started playing in college, you know, I obviously wanted to continue coaching. So I started coaching in the summer with residential camps and these past few years, um, I kind of took a look at the residential camp landscape and what it looks like now versus what it looks like when I was a camper. And I kind of reflected on why I enjoyed my residential camp experience as much as I did and how I could take where things were today and bring them back to where they were when I was a kid. Because for me as a coach, looking at where it was now, there was a huge discrepancy in, in the experience that I had. And I didn't think it was fair to the kids that were at camp right now. Um, that they weren't having the full experience that I got that made such an impact on me. So I wanted to find a way to bridge that gap and make the residential camp experience the best possible experience that it could be. Something that not only 
myself today, but myself in the past would be excited about. And I think, you know, one of the big things that's changed is technology as well. So, you know, I think an aspect that residential camps are missing right now is like meeting their players and parents where they're at. And so that's something that I wanted to do was find a way to take the things that we are doing as a, as a society right now in our everyday life and how do I kind of bridge the gap between, you know, what they're doing now and the residential camp system. So we wanted to bring in new things, new ideas, new technology that isn't out there yet and showcase it in our camps and help make the camp experience not only great on the field, but off the field as well. We didn't want it to be a, you know, you come in for a week of summer camp and then we just, you know, you just drop off the face of the earth. You know, it's not just a one week experience with us. We want to connect with our players and their parents in a year long, 365 days, you know, a year long experience. We want it to be every single day. Um, we want to be there for these kids. We want to, you know, give them the resources and the tools um, and the opportunities that we have access to. So, um, and again, regardless of money, that, that's the great thing with our chosen program is that we're finding these kids that are doing such huge things in their community and such important things off the field. At the same time, they're excelling on the field as well, but we're allowing them to come to camp for free. And so, you know, to, to be able to, to be in a position as a camp to give those opportunities to these kids is huge. Um, you know, we're excited to not only bridge the gap with technology, but bring in the community involvement aspect. And again, just surround ourselves with good people, um, you know, give these kids access to recruiting and online training. And um, we just have a great group of people involved on the field, off the field, players and coaches, partners. Um, it's just, you know, we've been really, really fortunate with what we've been able to put together. And I'm really excited to, to see it come to fruition. Has it been hard to bridge the gap or has it been decently easy? A little bit of both. I think all great things take time. They take a lot of work. You know, it's not something that you can just snap your fingers and um, put together or you know, it's also not something that you can kind of sit back idly and hope it puts itself together. So, you know, on the back end initially, it was a lot of work, but it was a lot of work that we as a team were willing to put in because we knew that the, we knew the impact that a program like this could have on so many people. And we knew the importance of having a program like this in the soccer community. Um, so while it was a lot of work, initially it really wasn't because we enjoyed what we were doing and so um you know we knew year one was going to be something that took a lot of logistics and it took a lot of you know just picking up the phone and making a phone call to people that we had never spoke to before and just you know kind of telling our story and where we were at and what we were trying to do and um you know it it's worked out great for us so far and i think the fact that you know we enjoy what we're doing and we know that you know, it's going to be a great summer. And, you know, after logistics of year one, you know, you can kind of, um, you know, put everything else together and, and just make it a great experience. So we're really excited. Um, it was a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun work. And we've met a lot of great people um, in the process. And we've been able to connect with a lot of amazing groups that are doing amazing things in their own community. So we're really excited to showcase them as well. So can you talk about the chosen program and how you choose players for it? Yeah, absolutely. So our chosen program, um, again, we select five kids for PS90 camps and we select five kids for our soccer girl props camps. Um, those kids that are selected, they come to camp completely for free. Um, we cover their tuition or their registration, um, but we really want to find kids that are doing their absolute best on the field but are finding ways to give back to their community and give back to the people around them whether it's soccer related or not um you know we have we actually just made our first chosen selection for soccer girl props camps her name's jamie campbell and um we actually she was nominated by the 18 yard box and la goalkeeping academy um you know they brought her to our attention and we kind of took a look at 
you know, what she was doing. And she does a great, great job on the field. But, you know, she's involved with so much stuff off the field. She, um, you know, helps out at her local, um, like, community centers. And she helps out with local clubs and does food banks. And she's involved in anything and everything that she can. And um, she's really doing a great job of lifting those around her up. And um, so we really took a look at, you know, we want to take a look at players and who they are as people and not just athletes. So she was a, a great person um, to be our first chosen recipient. And, um, you know, we have another one lined up, but we've really reached out to our partners and the people we know around the country um, to submit, you know, who they think would make a good cho chosen recipient. You know, we're out at tournaments as well and, and games and stuff like that to, you know, just take a look at who's out there and what's out there and talk to coaches and, you know, just see what's going on. We really want to stay in tune with what's going on in the soccer community. Um, but yeah, we also have like a nomination process. So if you go on our social media and you have somebody or you know somebody that might fit our chosen recipient, you know, guidelines, you can submit, you know, you can message us and send us their information and what they're doing and um, you know, how they're involved in their community and everything like that. And we would absolutely love to take a look at it and see what we can do. So, um, you know, while we make a few of the choices and we make kind of the last decision, it's, it's so much like a community um, involvement type of program. So we're really, really excited to get to do that this year. So how have your mentors helped you when founding PS90? They've been absolutely wonderful. Um, Tracy Noonan, actually, she runs Dynasty Goalkeeping, and she was a great mentor for me with starting these camps because with her running Dynasty, I was coaching for her last summer, and I kind of walked her through what some of my ideas were and, and where I was with the process. And, you know, she sat down with me for a good few hours just kind of talking me through the camp landscape and kind of a lot of the behind the scenes things that um, are involved with running a camp and how it all started and stuff like that. So she's been great. And the two of us are still working together to find ways to support, you know, each other's programs. And um, that's been great. She's been nothing but supportive and um, somebody that I can bounce ideas off of and ask questions. And um, so she's been great. I think Tony has been and always will be, a huge, you know, kind of guiding light for me in terms of how I want to, how I want to coach and, you know, what I want to do for these players and the experience that I want to give them. And, um, you know, some of the things that I've learned from him that I, I want to make sure are conveyed, I guess, um, through our program and, you know, on top of that, Vlaco has been a huge support. You know, I walked him through what we were doing as well, and, and he's been nothing but supportive, and he's really, really excited about, you know, what we've been able to put together. And like I said, you know, these people having kind of their blessing, I guess, or, you know, just reassurance that this is something that can be successful has been huge. Um, it's been paramount, paramount for us um, moving into this industry. So um, we're really fortunate to have them involved. When did you partner with Soccer Girl, Soccer Girl Probs? Uh, we partnered with them, I want to say, in about July of this past summer. So it's almost been a year. Um, but, you know, we recognized that this was an avenue that was kind of missing in the soccer world, but something that could make such a huge impact and something that's so important. We wanted to give girls an avenue to you know be themselves and you know help empower them as players and people to go after what they want to go after and I think Soccer Girl Props has done a great job creating this platform for female soccer players and we just wanted to help kind of enhance it and further it and you know find a way to take these awesome females and get them all together and just create an overall super exciting experience. Why is it so important that girls have female role models? I think it's super important because I think so often um, you want to see yourself 
in someone else. And so for these soccer players, um, I guess growing up, it's so important to be able to see, you know, female coaches or, um, you know, just females in general that are super successful or just authentically themselves. And just, I think it's a huge reassurance thing. Um, you know, like if you see a girl coaching, you're like, yeah, I can do that. It, or if you see somebody, you know, a head strength and conditioning coach that's a female, you're like, yeah, I can do that. I think it just shows girls what's possible and what's out there in that, yes, you can do this. And we are here to show you how and to help you get there. And so I think it's huge to have, you know, strong female role models and get these girls in front of them. I think it's one thing to see like a male in the position that you want to be in and yeah, you can still do it. Absolutely. Um, but I think it's so important to have somebody that you can relate to and you can ask, you know, different questions to, and, you know, they might be able to understand where you're at a little bit differently. So that's why I think it's important. So we've made it to our last question. What do you hope people remember about your impact to soccer and the world? I guess for me, I just want to be able to give back as much as I can. And however that looks, whatever it looks like, whether it's through these camps or something, you know, later down the line, I just want to be able to give people opportunities and just help people realize their potential um, on the field or off the field. Just make sure that everyone has, you know, an opportunity to be successful and to achieve their goals, whatever they are, and that maybe I played a little part in them being able to do that. So um, for me, I just, I just want, I just want to give back. I just want to lift everybody around me up and, and just try and find ways to be kind and for everybody to be kind to each other and realize that, you know, we're all, we're all, we all have different stories to tell and we all have different experiences and different backgrounds and soccer is something that can unite everybody and bring everybody together. Um, That there's so many opportunities in it. And I just want to, I just want, I want to be able to help people realize those opportunities. Tristan is a great role model for me and many others. I think it is incredible what she's been able to do ever since she was young. I think this shows how important the people that influence you are. I know just like Tristan, I have many amazing people to help me out, especially Tristan herself. Last Sunday during Easter, she is, she sent me a happy Easter text, and she's always been willing to take a call for me whenever I need about whatever. Tristan is someone I'd strive to be like in the future. I know it's been getting hard and on many people. My high school season has been recently canceled and I know it's been really hard on many of my teammates. I encourage others to continue to train and get better for seasons in the future. And I know I have about 330 days till my next season or high school season at least. And until I see you next week, remember to keep the game beautiful.